According to Wikipedia, Six Flags New Orleans is a 140-acre abandoned theme park that has been closed since Hurricane Katrina struck the state in August 2005. I have been an urban explorer for the last five years now, and I've seen dozens of abandoned churches, schools, buildings, warehouses, you name it. But I've never been able to experience the ultimate thrill of getting into an abandoned theme park. About six weeks ago, my friend Burton and I were eating lunch and looking online for new places to sneak into and explore. As we were checking local websites and borough records, we got a little sidetracked and ended up on Wikipedia reading articles about abandoned theme parks. A few clicks later, and we were reading about Six Flags New Orleans. Wow, this looks incredible! Burton exclaimed with a mouthful of pastrami sandwich. We should call Jack and Beaver and take a road trip there this weekend. I checked my phone for directions and travel time. Just a little over five hours. I relayed this information to Burton, who was still reading the Wikipedia article and smudging his greasy pastrami-covered fingerprints all over my monitor. I was about to call Jack when Burton said, worryingly, Wait, don't call just yet. I think there may be a problem. What is it? I asked and hurried over to the desk. It says here that police and guards patrol this place 24-7. If anyone is caught trespassing, it's a felony. Well, we can run it by the guys and see what they think. Maybe it's worth a chance. I chuckled at the ridiculousness of my statement. Is anything really worth a felony criminal charge? I called Jack and Burton, texted his twin brother, Beaver, to stop by and take a look at our new target. As soon as Beaver saw it, he was ready. Let's go tonight, he shouted and grabbed Burton's shoulders. Come on, Bert, we'll pack our bags now. Beaver was always the excited one. He could be enthusiastic in just about any situation. This was a heavy contrast to Burton, who really only ever got excited about lunch. About a half hour later, Jack stopped by and reviewed the Wikipedia article. This sounds neat. Can we beat the cops? Sure, if we're smart, I commented. It was unanimously decided that, on Saturday, we would make a drive to New Orleans and find the abandoned Six Flags. Saturday morning, Beaver was already knocking at my door. Burton was still in his pajamas and had a toothbrush in his mouth. Trying out for the Wu-Tang Clan? I jeered. He saluted me with the bird and asked to borrow some clothes. Of course, Beaver had a million questions. When are we leaving, Todd? Where can we stop for food? Did he pack any lunches? Burton was spitting out the rest of his toothpaste when Jack showed up. Take it easy, Beave, were his first words as he entered my foyer. As soon as Burton threw on some of my clothes, we tossed our bags into the bed of my pickup truck and hit the highway. I couldn't help but notice that everyone, even the usually obnoxious Beaver, was quiet. It was as if we all knew something terrible would happen and we were all just contemplating our deaths. Looking back, I think we all felt something like that, even if none of us would open our mouths to admit it. It was about 6.30, and the sun was starting to sink just a little as we pulled into the east side of New Orleans. This poverty-stricken area was dark, dingy, and just what a group of urban explorers wanted to see. I could barely make out the shape of a roller coaster in the distance. Beaver was the first one to speak. Does anyone know how to get around the surveillance? He asked. Jack responded. Yeah, Todd and I figured that the hardest part would be getting into the place. After that, we just have to stay one step ahead of them and we should be okay. We stopped about a half mile from the park and waited until the sun went down. We then switched on our flashlights and made our way toward our gold mine. As we entered the vicinity, we noticed a few uniformed officers walking around the fence perimeter but nothing inside the park itself. We easily snuck past the two soggy, donut-filled cops and entered the establishment. Our first stop was the Jester, the tall roller coaster that lumbered on the horizon as we first entered the city. A few minutes into our trek, I heard something sliding across the pavement. Burton, was that you? I turned around to see a confused Burton. No, but I definitely heard it. Jack and Beaver obviously heard it too, because Jack looked like he was about to pass out, 
and Beaver was as white as a sheet. Seeing this, I took command. Beaver, shine your light over there by the carnival game. I think that's where the sound came from. Nothing could have prepared me for what I saw. A long, menacing alligator stared back at us, his massive jaws grinning, his yellowed teeth prepared to crush his next victim. We silently booked it for the exit, but Beaver had dropped his light, and we had not brought any others in case the guards would see them. There was still enough moonlight to make out the entrance sign, so I pointed to it and told everyone to run that way. That was when the real trouble began. A thick, foul-smelling fog started to blanket the amusement park, and it greatly affected our vision. This fog was so thick that we were having a hard time breathing. I heard Burton and Beaver choking and coughing, and asthmatic Jack began to wheeze and started patting his jacket for his rescue inhaler. Even I, the most healthy of the group, could not easily inhale this putrid air and found myself gasping. We all lost sight of the sign and had no clue where we were going. Our entire cause had become hopeless. That's when I saw the light cutting through the fog. At first I thought it was Beaver's flashlight. However, this was not a focused beam of a flashlight. This was a glow, the way a light bulb would illuminate a room. Curious, I took a step toward this light. One step became two, and I became a moth. My friends tried to stop me, but they too were fixed on this warm yellow glow. At that moment, the light became everything. Darkness was the desert, and the light was our precious oasis. And that oasis was where I wanted to be. The light was comfort. It was all that I had in the sea of darkness. I craved the light. The light was my only true friend. Burton, Beaver, Jack, my parents, my relatives, my dog, none of them mattered. All I wanted, all I would accept, was the light. I was so close I could touch it. I reached out my fingertips to feel the ambient glow. Just one touch, and everything would be okay. I would be just fine. Just one touch. I awoke in a New Orleans hospital three days later with a broken arm and a huge bite on my thigh. Apparently some of the alligators in the park had begun to fight over us after we had passed out. I was the only one who survived. According to security personnel, Jack had died of asthma and was eaten posthumously. Beaver and Burton weren't so lucky. A patrolman found me with an alligator trying to rip my arm off and got me to safety. Three hours later, a man in a dark gray suit stopped in my room. He introduced himself as Amos and asked me about what I saw. I recounted the events of that night the best I could. Amos sighed and told me the truth of Six Flags. The official report states that after the hurricane, Six Flags assessed the damages and determined that the park was a total loss. However, they did attempt to rebuild the park. They brought in new equipment, new tools. They tried to reassemble a few wooden coasters. And there was some buildings that were bulldozed and rebuilt. All was great for about two months, until everyone on the construction site had mysteriously been killed. The cause of death was inconclusive. Some contractors were found a few weeks after that, even a Six Flags executive was found face down in a puddle of electrified water. The guard who tried to pull him out was severely shocked himself. All this death gave the city and the Six Flags Corporation a bad feeling, and they decided to shut the operation down permanently. The hurricane did more than destroy the city. It opened up an evil that is centered in that park. Those guards you snuck past aren't there to protect the park. They're there to protect people like you from the park. <laughs>